Chairman Gina Kekek, uh, welcome to In Focus. Well, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here with you. Well, we, we, we've been working on this, and I've been dabbling in the local language here. So, okay. poso. Poso. Yes. Yeah. Means hello. Yes. Welcome. Kind of a hello, I was told. Yep. Yep. You got that right. I'd love to just start with a little bit about uh, just in a historical perspective, mm-hmm. um, because this is an opportunity you know, for you and us to speak uh, mm-hmm. to a, a statewide audience. But what is it about uh, Menominee Tribe you think that folks um, need to know about you know, the culture, the life, um, and the relationship with the community outside of the reservation? Okay. So um, I think it's important to know that the Menominee Tribe are the original people of Wisconsin. Um, Our creation story begins at the mouth of the Menominee River, and it's just a short drive from here. Um, And we've been here for tens of thousands of years. And so I think that's important for um, people to be aware of. And um, we have been blessed to be able to stay on our original homeland. How much do you think uh, folks outside the re- reservation know about the culture? Because I think about this in terms of like, um, you know, outside of, you know, dabbling at a, at a, at a casino across the country on, 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 on a reservation, I've probably never been on a, a native reservation. And I would say as a reporter, I live somewhat of a privileged life and get to be exposed to a lot of different things. And I would mm-hmm. think that there are a lot of people across the state who don't get a chance to come on tribal lands. But uh, how much do you think um, folks outside the tribal lands know about uh, the community here? I, I don't know if if the, the outside of the reservation is um, very knowledgeable or fully aware of um, what what we do, what we're about, who we are, what we offer. Um, And we are seeing that next generation of tribal members come into leadership roles and the importance of being able to tell our story and having that story come from us as Menominee people. And so we're seeing that change and the importance of educating people in that we're still here and we're the original people and we're we're still on our original homeland. How important is that relationship with the outside community to have a connection to it as well, as long as as, as well as the folks here on the reservation? Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's I think it's very important because we're we're neighbors, and um, we should be working together and supporting together. And we all live within the state of Wisconsin, and to have good relationships um, with neighboring counties and businesses and is you know beneficial for all of us. Do you feel like Wisconsin as a whole is doing a good job in terms of uh, paying attention to folks that live on uh, native lands? I, I think that um, there's been, in the more recent you know, past few years, that there's been more um, acknowledgement of the indigenous people that live in Wisconsin. And that's a good thing, right? Yes, that's a good thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's talk a little bit about your journey into uh, tribal politics. Um, okay. How did you know that this was going to be a space for you that, that you'd want to commit your life to? I don't know if it is something that, as Menominee, that, that we want to be doing or, or grow to be doing. I think it's um, something greater than that. I, I think it's our something that's instilled with us that it's our responsibility. It's our responsibility to take on um, those, those teachings that have been passed on through generations um, and to be able to guide and um, support one another. And so when the decision was made, it's a family decision for, for me um, because... Um, we're a very family oriented um, family and we do a lot of things with our, our children and we're very active. And you say we, you mean the, the tribal husband. community itself or just yourself well, with, personally? For me personally, with my husband. And um, so we had to make that decision because we know it would be an impact on, on the family with the children. And um, 
But I read that you started working in tribal government really early, like in your teen years. I, or, I or, did. the One of the first jobs I had was within our tribal um, chairman's office back in the early 90s. And so I think that just kind of stuck with me throughout life. And um, it was something important was, to you to, to, yep, to be a part of? When it was time to make that decision, you know, bringing it to my family and discussing it with them. And is this something that you think, you know, we should do? Um, they're very supportive. And um, it's, it's been an honor to be seated up here with the fellow leaders of the tribe. Um, and I, I try and um, make the best decision that I can. Um, you know, I'll, I'll do my homework and I'll make sure that the getting the background historical information and um, a lot of prayers, a lot of prayers go into it, asking for that, that strength and that guidance so that making sure we're making the right decision for the betterment of our people. I'm curious to know how you would describe the community um, environment here in terms of the people, the family, like the things that everybody tends to have in common. How would you describe that? We're, we're a very communal community, I guess. Um, uh, we have... Um, relationships with with everyone we're very uh close-knit um supportive of each other um and and we you know we do look at that as we're we're all related we're all menominee so it's a very um close-knit communal space i guess for us yeah and as tri- as, as, as tribal chair a lot of folks outside may not understand that that's the equivalent of being the president right. of, of a of a land, mm-hmm. um, I'd be remiss if I wouldn't ask someone in your position mm-hmm. to maybe give us a sense of the state of things mm-hmm. for the Menominee Tribe right now in Wisconsin. Okay, so that is something we are um, a sovereign nation, and and that's exactly it. That it's the the chairperson of the tribe is equivalent to the president of the United States. Um, we we do have. Um, relationships that we um, keep government to government relationships with tribal um, other tribal nations um, state level and federal so I think right now for our tribe like a lot of tribes um, we are still seeing the the impacts of the pandemic um, we're looking at um, a lot of different issues with, you know, behavior health and our, our youth and um, homeless and AODA issues. Um, so there's, we're seeing that being, coming out of the pandemic, being related to that, an increase in, in those types of issues. And how are you addressing it? Mm-hmm. Um, and we have teams in place. We have... Um, committee work that that gets done and we did um get the help of you know the ARPA funding um we do have assistance through different grants um we have teams in place we have a a great team of grant writers um but there's there's issues that we have a, a number of I guess, unmet needs that we struggle with. What are, what are those, you think? Um, AODA issues, homelessness. Um, we have a, a large population of elderly and um, a facility for our aging that we need to expand on. Um, we have, you know, health care that um, is looking for hopefully at some point an, a new healthcare facility. Um, our youth, we support our youth as much as possible to try and 
make sure that we're being able to offer them the um, prevention and you know intervention for um, AODA issues. Not ADOH, what does that stand? Alcohol and um, other drug abuse. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. I also read too that, you know, not just here on tribal lands, but throughout Menominee County, you know, the health outcomes in this county are the worst of any county in the state. Mm -hmm. What do you think is uniquely uh, different about what's causing that Mm -hmm. um, here in the Menominee land? Where there's only one Menominee tribe. And when we look at the, the data um, to our per capita, it is alarmingly concerning. Um, we have our enrollment of close to 9,000 members. And I know our, like our elderly population alone is almost as big as some small tribes. Um, we are one of the larger tribes in the state of Wisconsin, and um, we're ranked um, with health outcomes the least healthiest in the state of Wisconsin. Um, and so there's, again, like a lot of our unmet needs that, that we're trying to um, address with limited resources. We talk about, you know, the health outcomes in terms of uh, marijuana use, uh, overall drug use, and mm-hmm. education dropout, those sorts of things are um, some of the worst numbers out there. Mm-hmm. Um, how bad is it? Okay, so for an omni, opioid is in the top three of the substance abuse within our community. Um, in 2023, we had a 76% um, contributed to the deaths of opioid. So again, like when I'm talking about our per capita, that was 17 total deaths, but that's high for us. Right. That sounds like a a small number, but if you've only got, you know, 8,700 folks in your tribe. That's high. Um, So some things that we are looking at is we're developing, we've, we have developed, we've taken action. We've have developed a drug intervention team. Um, and it's a multidisciplinary um, group of people from within our community, and um, they're they're working towards creating those plans um, to address what we're dealing with, and some of that includes um, prevention and intervention activities within the community. Training for clinical and peer workforce, bringing in uh, peer specialists, um, recovery coaches. Uh, Community members have also taken the initiative to start their own recovery groups. Um, And so if if we're able to support them in any way, you know, um, that that team is available to help them with moving their plans forward, too. Yeah, I think I read somewhere you made a comment saying we've done the research, uh, we've seen the data. What needs to happen now? Well, what we're hearing from from our community, because we continue to meet with our tribal members, we continue to hear from them. And and one thing that we're hearing a lot of is um, they want prevention. They want intervention. Um, Since the pandemic, you know, like I had said, we're we're moving out of that. but it's taken a little longer to bring those things back into light again. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we had that all in place prior. And um, so we're hearing from the community, they want, they want more prevention activities. And so that's something that we are working towards. And we know you have, and I hope I say this proper, the Matawakin Wellness Center. Am I saying that the right way? Excuse me. The Manasekia. 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 I worked on that yeah. for an hour before we started this interview. Yeah. <laughs> but we know you, you know, do treatment there and you mm-hmm. serve the people in that way, but I know you want to, to, would like to expand mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was a recent attempt to open up a new treatment center um, off the reservation, and that was um, not approved by the folks in that community off reservation. Um, why is it important to open something mm-hmm. up off the reservation? Are we talking about the Great Lakes Intertribal Council 
you with the center? Yes. Okay. We are looking at, you know, tribes are collaborating together and we are looking at um, trying to, we're moving towards a, a youth treatment facility um, that all youth from tribal nations are, are welcome in. So it's not centralized anywhere, but it's off reservation where it can be open to all indigenous youth that may need that assistance. How do you get the folks uh, outside the reservation again um, mm-hmm. to care about these types of issues and to, to be vested mm-hmm. with you? How do you do that? Mm-hmm. I think a big part of it is education. I, I think that, you know, um, building those relationships and um, helping to educate on um, what our needs are and how we can work together. Because um, it's not just within reservations, it's, it's everywhere. It doesn't just impact us here in, in Menominee. It doesn't just impact, you know, other relatives on other reservations. It's the entire state. So we have to come together and work together. And I know in uh, Menominee and uh, the Spirit Lake uh, tribes in North Dakota uh, have filed a lawsuit against some of the social media companies um, for issues uh, around damage done to teens that use social media. And I know you can't talk about the lawsuit specifically, but can you speak to your concerns about the impact of social media on youth and your community? So we did um, um, join the the litigation and um, our, our legal team that's working with that. Um, I would refer you to them so they, they can um, schedule uh, a time to sit with you and have a further conversation. Yeah, but you, you can't speak to uh, your concerns about social media in general, not necessarily naming anybody or speaking yeah. to anybody specifically, but... So personally, for, for me, um, with my own children, you know, there's, um, there's concerns. We, we do limit their time. We limit, limit their screen time. Um, and try and make sure that we have... a. Uh, um, a healthy connection to it. I don't think it's going away. Um, but as as their parents, it's our responsibility to um, make sure they they understand and are aware of um, the um, being able to handle handle things in a healthy way. Yeah. So we try and raise our our kids in a in a good way and make sure that they're aware of anything um, that might be dangerous or at risk or, you know. Um, and that's personally for my family, you know, right. with our kids. Yeah. It seems like for a lot of communities, um, there's always this concern about, you know, culture, um, you know, mm-hmm. historical traditions as they kind of come together with mm-hmm. technology and innovation. Mm-hmm. Um, how much of that is in play in terms of like mm-hmm. technology infringing on tradition uh, for the Menominee tribe? Mm-hmm. I, I guess it would be on on what we would consider um, infringing. I guess it's um, like do you for feel- example, I'm going to share an example with you. We have a grassroots movement, Menominee U, and um, it started throughout the pandemic, and um, it has grown. And they offer um, Menominee language online. So there's people all over that are able to log on and learn. So that's a benefit. You know, that, that's helpful for people who may not have had the opportunity. So now they can go online and do it. Yeah. So it's, it's I mean, it can, it can be helpful. But tradition has to be important for... You know, for your community, I would imagine, mm-hmm. like holding on to it, and mm-hmm. and um, like you mentioned, language. Like I know there's a dwindling population of folks that speak the native tongue mm-hmm. uh, here on the reservation. Like, how do you address those sorts of things? I think by by supporting the initiatives and the efforts that that are there, um, and we see a, a positive change, and we do see an increase and. In, there's more people wanting to learn learn that language, and part of that language is also learning um, culture and traditions that are connected to it. And so, it's um, 
it's important for for me um, to stay connected to our, our culture and traditions. Um, it helps me to stay grounded and stay balanced. Can you give us a snapshot in terms of how prevalent the native language is here in terms of how many folks still speak it and, and use it? It's, um, it's limited, but it's growing. So um, well, you, can, you can go into a store and you can hear people speaking and having conversations. And so it is growing to where it's being normalized. It's being normalized again in the community. That has to bring you some joy, right? It is. It's, it's a powerful feeling. And it's, it's, um, it's just an amazing feeling. Do you worry ever about it going away and, and, then, and no one speaking the language at some point? Like, it's, is it headed in that direction at all? I hope not. I, I, you know, I hope not. And um, we have to be able to do our part. Um, we have, um, with my own children, uh, my son, who's in high school, um, committed to a two-year program for the youth immersion program. Our five-year-old daughter, we put her into the um, immersion program. And um, as a family, we take the online Menominee language classes. So we have to do our part. I'm curious to know, uh, as chairperson, how do you handle all these, these, these weights, these heavy weights of these, these uh, issues that you're coping with and trying to manage and solve? How do you handle all that? How does that hit you personal? It can be exhausting. Um, it can be exhausting knowing the, the weight and the responsibility. Um, but I, I'm not alone. Um, there is nine of us on our tribal council. Um, we all are very supportive to one another. We agree to disagree. We um, are able to share that workload. Um, we have a, a management team that is also um, helpful and supportive. And um, so when we need to sit decisions made, it's not just coming from uh, myself or, you know, it's, it's a collaborative effort of, of all of us. And again, that's what I mean when I say that it's the responsibility when we're in these leadership roles that we work together and we make those decisions together. We're doing what we can in the best interest of the Menominee people and a tribe. And I was interested to find uh, in your role as chairperson, you're in this capacity for in, in these one-year terms. Mm -hmm. So every year you're uh, having to be voted in. Mm -hmm. um, is that enough time? I mean, it's, it's like, you know, you think of a, a presidency and mm -hmm. the leadership in our the typical U.S. government. Yeah. I think we would love to, if we could get a new president every year. <laughs> but yeah. do you feel like, is, does that work in your favor? Or is mm -hmm. it tougher to get things done in that short kind of a space? Because mm -hmm. in what term are you on right now? So I... Um, I am in my second term as chairperson, okay. my second year as chairperson, and I'm in my second term as a seated legislator. So I finished one term, um, just a three-year term, mm -hmm. uh, re-elected, and um, coming into my second term, then I was um, voted on to be the chairperson last year. And then again this year, the ask was if I would continue. Um, and it's been exhausting work, like I said, but it's, um, um, it's helpful because I'm not doing it alone. Yeah. So my question would be this short term that, 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 mm -hmm. you know, that I see, is that helping you get more things done or is it making it harder to get things done? Um, I think within the first year, uh, it was, it was difficult, um, because it was also, a a learning for me. It was also trying to, um, 
find my flow, I guess, you know, and um, so that, that first year was a little bit more difficult. Coming into the second year um, has been a, a, a little bit more easier, um, and there wasn't that um, transition, I guess, that takes some time to keep moving on. Yeah. So um, I, I think it would be interesting um, with the the new generation of legislators that are coming in. Um, you know, we we are seeing that it's it is difficult with only a one year term, and if the body um, would agree to continue that chairperson in the role throughout that chair's um, legislative term, I guess. It, it might be more productive for us. I'd also be curious to hear you ex- maybe give your insight in the differences between a tribal government versus a typical U.S. government, like how that works and what people should understand. I, I think within our tribal government, um, our priorities are um, our elders and our youth. Um, those are two groups that, that we tend to always um, focus on to make sure that they're being taken care of, making sure that they're, they're being um, provided for. Yeah. I don't know if that happens in the federal government or the state government. I, you know, but for um, our tribal nation, that's our focus is our elders and our youth. Yeah, and what's going well? for the Manabe tribe? Um, I think we have a lot of things to be proud of and a lot of things that are happening. We have a lot of services that we're able to um, provide to our membership. And although we're, a, a, you know, we are heavy, heavy, heavily dependent on, on grants, um, we're not by any means the any of the richest tribes we um, we have a small, modest tribal budget, um, but it all goes back into our services um, to make sure that services are provided for the membership. Yeah, and you bring up money. Uh, I know uh, the Menominee and other uh, Native tribes here in the state of Wisconsin receive a piece of the opioid settlement. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's roughly six, seven million bucks um, split around the different tribes. How is that helping mm-hmm. in terms of dealing with some of the problems? Mm-hmm. So we we um, we did receive opioid settlement funds, and um, we are using those to assist us with combating um, some of the more um, serious, I guess, issues. Making sure that we have those um, things in place, like the clinical staff. Um, that's competitive all over, not just here, everywhere, you know, and um, we're collaborating with um, outside agencies to try and try and assist with um, uh, counseling services, referrals, treatment services. And so um, what we are receiving is going right back into helping us combat the opioid addiction. Yeah, I take it you're big on treatment, not necessarily punishment when it comes to addiction. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't think we can uh, criminalize um, someone who is struggling with addiction. Um, they're they're asking for support. You know, they're they're. Um, I think what I've seen with. Um, how it's affected, I guess, my myself and um, my family, where um, loved ones that we know, and um, it's that um, looking for a purpose and and feeling that self esteem, um, feeling valuable, and. Um, helping through their traumas and meeting them where they're at. And um, if that means, you know, walking through 
the doors with them to, to treatment and just giving them that support. And you mentioned trauma. How much has this community been affected by generational trauma? Mm. And what kind of things would that be? Yeah. So um, we deal with we deal with trauma and we do our best to try and practice trauma informed care. Um, there's things that we're seeing since the pandemic um, with the increase of the opioid addictions and our, our children are losing parents. Our children are being raised by grandparents. Um, our children are witnessing overdoses. Our, our children are, are needing um, education and prevention and intervention services at a younger age. Um, and I think it's important for us to address them as soon as we can. Um, and that's always, I guess for me, that's been a concern because I, I come from working in our school district and starting to see the young ones being affected by the, the addictions and the overdoses. I was like, okay, but when they're getting into high school, are we prepared for how this is going to impact their lives? Um, so I think it's really important that, that we address those as soon as we can. Let's talk the future. What does the future look like for the Menominee tribe? What do you see? I'm always hopeful. Um, and I, I see us um, always moving forward and always progressing. Um, and we have a lot of things going for us. Um, we've done studies on our, within our educational department and keeping the data of how many um, graduates we have from uh, up to a bachelor's and a master's and doctorates. And um, so it's, it's a very proud, um, something to be very proud of that we have that here and um, we'll continue to grow. We'll continue to, to um, progress forward and it's, it's going to be exciting, you know, for, for my kids because I can see the changes happening and it's going to be a better life and a better opportunity for them when, when they become adults. In why you care so much? I, I think that's part of our, our Menominee values that, that come with us is you always try and make sure that things are taken care of for the next generations. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Chairwoman Kakak, thank you so much for being in, on in focus with us. Well, thank you for having me. Want to weigh in? <laughs> Why in? I knew I was going to yeah. mess that up. <laughs> Why in? Yeah, Why in? Thank you so much. Yeah. Appreciate you.